Welcome and thanks for tuning in to the RGA TV show. Who has a lot to say? That's a lot to say. I got. We're starting off with RJ in the very beginning because Matt's here, and I know he got to go. Yeah. So um, yes. let's talk about RGA. We got some. We got some big stuff coming, we got right? Some big stuff. Oh yeah, going into the end of this year, we've got Oof. some really, really strong stuff going on. Um, so literally, we are revamping um, a lot of the marketing resources and tools that we have. Um, we launched our author program, which we're doing every 12 to 18 months. We're going to have some sort of authoring op opportunity. Wow. Yep. Um, so we're going into our second book. Um, so if you need any information on that, go to the website, rjanetwork.net. What's that website? rjanetwork.net. There we go. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> on top of that, we've got our podcast. Um, we've got our... Uh, the podcast is actually going really well. We've had some really great... We've had some really so, good speakers. Just to clarify, the podcast is all... It's membership-driven. So, um, you know, if you, to get on that, you have to be a member. In yes. Um, also, our Atlanta chapter. Let's give a shout-out to uh, Atlanta, Atlanta and our leadership team over there because uh, I think we're up to, I think, 10 members in Atlanta. Nice. Just like that. You know, so that's fantastic. Atlanta um, is a very big networking hub that people yeah. don't realize. Oh yeah, yeah, for that sure. That in Chattanooga. Yeah, and we're gonna have a strong, Same. we're gonna have a strong presence Chattanooga. in Atlanta very shortly. Um, so we've got the authoring program, we've got the podcast, we've got um, this, uh, the RGA T TV the, show, the RGA Hour, our TV uh, show and interviews. Um, this is another perk of membership. Not that you get this for free unless you're a premium member, but. Just that you have access to this, um, this the hardware, this this, uh, this this man right here, the experience right here um, of being able. I watched YouTube last night and stayed at Holiday Inn Express. Yeah, I'm now he's genius. A pro. Now he's a pro. <laughs> so you know, just having access to the professionals yeah. and the resources to be able to get this done. Um, so that's another big one. Another one that a lot of people don't take as much advantage of as they should is our Facebook groups, our meetup groups. Um, I know we had a conversation earlier about sometimes Meta's a little screwy when it oh, comes to the a uh, lot screwy. the pay, the different pages and things like that. Mm. But we're specifically talking about are the groups that we have. Okay, so for instance, here in uh, Tampa area, mm -hmm. we have the Tampa Bay Young Professionals. There's a group that has like I think it's eight thousand people in it, right? <sighs> So, like, that's one of the groups. Our members can post in there. Right. Right? And better yet, it's take this video yeah. that you come here and create this nine-minute interview yep. and utilize that, and I will bloody pin it. Yep. I'll pin it to the top, right? Like, create that that media opportunity. Um, I always say it's, it, you know, it's it's funny. You know, the best content in the world, and if you are not um, utilizing it. We had this conversation yeah. about a month ago about yeah. how people will actually go yeah. in and they'll get video done. Mm -hmm. and they don't ever use it. Never use and it. And go, I didn't get anything out of it. No. How could you have not gotten anything out of it? That right. doesn't make any sense to me. But if you don't use it, it's like the lottery. If you, if you don't play, you can't win. Right. You know, I have the same thing happen. I, I, not, not often, but I think uh, twice this year um, I got a phone call. Oh, I just, I'm just not getting the value out of my, my membership. And I'm right. like, what do you mean you're not like, are you doing all the things that we ask you to do to be able to be successful? No. They went to one meeting or two meetings and thought that they should just yeah. have recouped what Every, they spent. Everybody's just going to throw business at them because they showed up. Right. It does right. not work twice. that way. Right. Twice. You came twice. And there were different meetings. They didn't yeah. go to the same meeting nope. twice. Exactly. So it's a community, people. It's a community. We're, it's a community of small business owners, entrepreneurs. We are providing resources. Yep. We're providing opportunities. A lot of resources. A lot of resources. I mean, I mean, there's resources that people don't they don't even know is there. Mm -hmm. and I guarantee I don't know all of them, but after I, I really the other day and I suddenly sat down and I had time and I went through the RGA website 
I'm like, oh, crap, I didn't know that. Oh, crap, I didn't know. And I didn't know that person did that. And I know that the yeah. person did that. Everybody on that site is a resource. Yeah. Everybody. And we can all use each other. Every, there's not one person in our RGA group that are in that whole network that you can sit there and go, hey, I don't need that person. No. No. Well, that's kind of one, that was one of the, the founding principles when I created RGA Speaks with right. Mark was, you know, we have too much, there's too much capacity. There's too much experience and knowledge inside of RGA to not be sharing it. That's why, that's, correct. that's why for this first circuit, you know, we used all speakers inside of RGA. Mm -hmm. Not that RGA Speaks is always about RGA members. Right. You know, it's about, that is actually more of a, um, something that's done for membership. Right. Right. right, exactly. Kind of like the, kind of like the uh, Business Growth Podcast, which is another thing <laughs> that, uh, that we're going to be launching at the beginning of the year, yeah. you know, just to help people consistently uh, improve. And we're looking forward to having some really great guests on that show. Yeah. So that's that, I'm looking, actually, I'm actually looking forward to that one. Yeah. I mean, I look forward to all of them because I like talking to people. It's yeah. kind of what I do. Oh, yeah. But that one's, it, I'm intrigued, mm -hmm. heavily intrigued because it's like you get a, get a little deeper dive Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's well, that's what these nine minute segments are supposed to be for. Is we get in here and we get to sit down and talk to people. Go, okay, this is what you do, how you do it, why you do it. But there's sometimes you want to get a little more deeper, a little more meat, yeah. and you don't get that because it's only nine minutes. Right. Well, and that's really the point of so the podcasts are free to membership, mm -hmm. right? The TV interview normally there's a cost associated, mm -hmm. but this is a nine minute promotional video for you and your business. That's what the that's what the mm -hmm. interviews are. Right. This isn't us sitting here and just, you know, chit chatting and going down rabbit holes. Yeah. There's, there's a, I mean, that happens a little yeah, bit. A little bit. But <laughs> the podcast, we go down the rabbit hole. Oh, we the do podcast, all the time. Oh my gosh. You know, it's we're, like, we're, I feel bad for them right, sometimes. That's right. That's, that's more, we want to have uh, fun. We uh, want people to get to know yep. you and we don't want it to be as professional. Right. That nine minute interview, I mean, John wore a jacket for this, people. Look at this. Look at that. I know. Look it's at like, that. This my wife has asked me, what are you doing with the jacket tonight? I'm like, going, I got an interview today. It's, a, it's the TV show today. There we go. She goes, Oh. Oh. You didn't wear a jacket the other night. We went to the wheelie thing, and I'm like, I wore a sweater. My yeah, black sweater. Yeah. Anyway. There we go. So that's that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today, though, was really just are you making use of the tools and resources that we have available? And if not, I mean, here's the thing. You know where you can start is by reading your Monday email. If you are got mine on today. the RGA mailing list, yeah. read your Monday email. Well, you got two today. I got three today. Three? I don't know how I got the third one. I don't think it was meant for me, but it was RGA. <laughs> there we go. I deleted there it. There we go. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, that's the goal. Well, I know you send out the one that tells what you know. Okay, so this week we're going to talk about this right. in our groups, and that's awesome, right? Then the other one I got is about there's so much opportunity out there for everybody to, you know, maybe maybe I should just oh, we'll talk about it after. I, I have an idea. Okay. So, but I yeah, like ideas. It's, ideas are good. Ideas, ideas are, are good. good. Yeah, yeah, they're good, good, good. So what else is going on? Um, literally, the authoring program is probably the big Biggest push. Thing? That and the holiday party. That's uh, when is that? That's this Thursday. Yeah, I know. That's this Thursday. So. Actually, it'll be on when this coming, is on. Are you coming Thursday? I don't know. I don't know if your name's on the list. I don't think I'm on the list. Okay, well, we'll get you on the list. We'll, we'll force him. He has no choice. Oh. Sometimes you don't want me to. <laughs> did we tell you about the prohibition room? Yes, that okay. I do know about. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect. Just making sure. Um, yeah, so that's, I would say that's, you know, the, we've got that coming up. Then uh, next month we're going to do the uh, TV interviews at a, a different location. Yes, we are. We're excited Big about that. Big surprise. We're excited about that. Um, also at the holiday party, we're announcing the theme for next year. Have I told you the theme? No. Okay, all right. Well, I'll tell you offline so you know. Okay. Because you're part of our, our leadership team, so you're, you're allowed to know. Unless you turn into uh, what's his name? That was the Spider Man that they couldn't tell any any of the secrets. Oh no, to. no that's not me. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, guys. Well, hey, I am super excited. I hope you enjoy these episodes for today. Um, and please check out rjnetwork.net. Make sure you're on the mailing list. And, yeah, it's a big uh, deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal because we change it every week. There's yep. always constantly. And then if we have updates to like meetings or something, mm -hmm. like because of a hurricane or mm -hmm. some other event. You know, it's all on that. So make sure you're on the Monday email and uh, thank you for being here. Stick around. We got more guests coming right up.
And you know what? We got Cheryl Bowles from Compass. You discover more cash flow for your business. I'm just reading it off your website. So, mm -hmm. but that is a big thing right now. Very much so. Very big thing. So let's talk about that. Perfect. Okay, basically in today's world, everybody needs cash flow. We need oh, it yeah. as fast and with the inflation, things going on, cash flow is big. How do we get cash flow? Would it be cool for IRS to pay you? Oh God, yeah, I'd love to have that check. Instead of IRS pay, you know, we mm. all know what that check looks like otherwise going the other yep. direction. Uh huh. Okay, there are so many incentives. Businesses don't know, they, they see the big ones, the ERC things, you know, right. maybe cost seg is out there. There's like 50, 60, 80 different opportunities out what? there for people and they're not aware of it. So let's start with that. Second thing is, there's grants, certain types of grants for different people. There's incentives for people starting their 401k. It's not just incentives for employees. Okay. There's incentives for prop re ways to reduce your property taxes if you own buildings. Right. Um, there's ways to actually get better loans. A lot of times, right now with the inflation, we're talking about inflation. Yeah. Loans, go to a bank and ask for a loan to do something like an acquisition or something with equipment and it has, doesn't have to do with buying a building. They're gonna say, I'm sorry, yeah, it's not our it's not our wheelhouse. Well, not today. Not today. Maybe if things change, but we used to do that. Right. That's the best one. We used to do that. So uh, that that is that is and, and I know a lot of entrepreneurs that are just now getting they're you know, they're they decide to open a, a business now and I'm like, Okay, all right. Hey, but there's and, startup incentives for that. There are. Which and I and then people ask me, I'm like, I have no idea. I have I have bootstrapped this for my whole life, so I have no idea. But now that you're saying this, even my brain's going, hmm, grants. I know about those. Those mm -hmm. are nice, but I don't know if I fit in the category and all that kind of fun stuff. So, but that's what that's how that's really what you do. Right. Well, okay. So, what got you into this world? Well, I have a financial background yep. in the fact that you know my dad was um, he was. A disabled guy who got himself up and worked really, really hard. So we learned the hard work aspect. Right. We know how to work hard because, you know, the buck stops here, right? We're correct. So um, so we learned how that aspect of it. But he also learned to do so much of that in open money businesses. So I've got all that background, but he didn't know how to multiply it beyond that. Oh. He didn't know how to use that business to become more for the next opportunity or, in this sadly, create the legacy that he should have been able to create for my family, mostly my mother. Right. And so, you know, I got in the financial world as a financial advisor because I wanted to help people learn how to multiply their money in a proper way and in a safer way. So then we bring in, I get married, got a father-in-law, cardiologist, hematologist. He had tax shelters and all these things that were back in the 70s. Right. But yeah. Some of the 80s maybe, you know, but mostly Bahamas 70s. And, you know. and things changed. Yeah. Somebody forgot to tell him that. Oh, Lord. He didn't have the advisors. He lost opportunities. Mm. The poor man not only had to go bankruptcy, the grandmother, you know, the mother-in-law, yep. forget it. She ended up losing the house that, of her dreams. Oh, he geez. had to lower his practice. He ended up dying with the gurney still in his garage. Oh, my. So he, he, he re got back up on it. Yeah. Then he turned around and had Alzheimer's and didn't think about the protection of it and then still had to pay it out because of long-term care because he forgot that piece of the pie. Mm. Oh, I'll be good enough to be able to take care of it. Well, who thought the dementia was going to take 10 years? Yeah. So the long-term care ended up dying off financially in three years and he didn't think about the rest of it. So it comes back to how do we use our businesses to support our families? I mean, why do we have a business? Right, to make money. It's to make money, but it's also to have what? Control. Oh, yeah. Control is awesome. We like having our own Control schedule. is very good. We like having flexibility, yes, and we yes, like not we to do. answer to somebody else, That's right? That's correct, yeah. So what do we do? Whatever it takes to keep it afloat, we put the money yep. back in. Yep. Okay? We had this conversation earlier. We yeah. put the money in to see what it takes to keep it afloat. We right. will put the risk out to have the control, the flexibility, with the opportunity for the big payday. Yeah. Okay? Well... Why aren't we using those opportunities that come to us that we're not aware of? We've got these tax incentives. I mean, for a restaurant who was closed, for an average size restaurant, 100 employees, it's not uncommon for me to be able to bring them $800,000. But what if you don't have any employees? Okay. And well, you're just a company and it's like three or four guys and we're all, we K2 K ourselves or whatever that is in the okay. end of the year. The self-employed, there's different grants and different options for the different startup piece. Okay. But you're not going to get the ERC, which is going to be your employee yeah, retention. Yeah. You're right, not right. going to get the employee portions. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you hire people, they're worth 1200 to $10,000 for every single person you hire going forward. 
Really? Yeah, but my husband and I owned our own business. Didn't okay. have the employees because we had it where we um, mm-hmm. yep. had the 1099 gift. Yep, yep. And um, so we didn't get any of those monies because you or the related person can't get those. Correct. So, and the, but you know, you also had PPPs. The ERC is uh, combined with it now. Most people thought it was only the ERC or the PPP. Mm-hmm. Um, now you have, let's say it's 100,000 tops for both of them. If you got the 30,000 PPP, you got 70,000 coming back with the ERC. So you do have other options available. Again, you got to, do you qualify? Did you have reductions where you shut down? There's a lot of things that go with it. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why you, you want to work with somebody instead of just go willy nilly. Cause you might spend a lot of time spinning a lot of wheels, find out there was no money mm-hmm. there to begin with, like I said with my husband and I. So what does the average person do? It depends on what you do. Right. Because if you're into tech, there's R&D available to you with different stuff that you didn't know about, even though you might still not have an employee option. And maybe you own a business, maybe you're rental real estate. And so you have all the cost segregation, which is actually front-loading your depreciation. Mm-hmm. So then you can turn around and reinvest that into your business. Okay. So there's a lot of different things with that, as I said, with the loans as well, property tax reductions. Another thing most people don't think about is we actually audit credit cards. We audit workers' comp. We audit claims for health insurance like doctors. Mm. Are you being paid wrong? Are they charging you fees you didn't know about? Are you getting paid what you should? Wow. There's nothing worse than a leaky boat. Right. You can keep filling it, filling it, but after a while, you're still taking on some water, even if it's not enough to drown you. And, you know, if it's not going to sink you, you're still in a situation, though, you're still leaking. Right. Well, that might be the only profit that you had. So now you're back putting money back in instead of taking out. Feeding the beast. Okay. Right. Yep. The bottom of this line of all of it is that we need to make our businesses valuable and profitable. We are going to get an exit strategy and we're going to sell this thing or we're going to make it a legacy deal. But either so, we want to push it on in a proper manner, Got take it. what we need off the table and create our own wealth. I mean, it's all about what comes back to us in the long run. We want to have the life we need and we want. Okay. Most of us are into some form of legacy who've actually had a business because we either want to take the money out and put it towards our family or we want to give it to our family. Right. You got to have a business valuation because our money is tied into our business just as much as it's tied into our personal. Right. If we are business owners. Yeah. Yeah. No one understands. If you're not a business owner, you you have no clue. And I, I love people going, well, if it was my business, I'd just do this. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm just saying. Yeah, and you might have tried that and said, well, didn't they done that and mm. uh, can write the book Got on the it. Got the shirt. Yeah, burned right? it. <laughs> Or you say, like, maybe it wasn't the right time. Right, right, right. Um, you know, maybe it wasn't, it, you know, you hit COVID right at that right time. Mm. Okay. Some people, it buried them. Some people are surviving. Right. Some people actually, like Amazon, they flourished. Thrived. Yeah. Exactly. And Zoom. Zoom. The guys right. that own Zoom. Oh, my. Oh, my. You I can't tell me they're not making money. I didn't invest in that fast enough, did I? <laughs> at the wrong God, time. Again, right. you're on the backside. So, you know, and I think people... What I try to help businesses understand is, okay, I brought you money, or we looked and found out what you're spending your time and money on right. um, expense-wise. How is that going to the bottom line? How right. is that creating a valuation for you? Okay, you're having a hard time with the re- retaining employees. Well, did we talk about the different things that you can do to incentivize them enough? It doesn't break the bank, but now we found you money to pay for that? Right, right. So that why? The money is great, and it's in, you know to bring a million dollars to a company is just fantastic. Yeah. Depending on the house size, how big the company is, it's a hundred thousand for a small company. They're excited to have that money. Yep. Okay. But what are you going to do with it? Right. Okay. Right. Are we going to spend it wisely? Are we going to invest it in certain things, or is it time to take some of that off and invest it for yourself? Because how many of us have retirement, real retirement plans? Right. We're going to sell the business. That's our retirement. Well, I got news for everybody. Mm. How many times does it really work? Yeah. It, nope. How do people get a hold of you? We're out of time already. Oh, my. Cheryl, CherylBoyles.com, 813-220-1814. Or always, you can remember, Uncover cash flow, and that will get you the same site. That's awesome. Thank you for being on today. We really appreciate it. Okay, welcome back. You know, we just heard from a chef. Uh, and she's got this great Jamaican, oh my God, it's so good. But you know, now we're going to talk water. Water is important, right? I mean, super important. And out of all the systems that are out there, which I've seen a lot of, mm-hmm. um, I love you guys. 
So, and matter of fact, now that I, I after we get done, I got two places to go show you guys, so we can get you guys involved. Let's, but let's talk about your the water the water treatment systems, you guys. So we develop a uh, well, actually the founder developed. He's a master water specialist. Okay. Uh, he designed a system specifically for. We have two systems: one for Texas, one for Florida. The whole point is it's not a one size fits all. So oh, absolutely. Right. Because the water is different everywhere. Yep. Um, we wanted to come up with a system that can address as many contaminants as possible, not just the hardness, which is regular water softener, um, but, and also to not be a burden for the customer right. to have uh, so much service. So we develop a 10 stage processor. Uh, it's very unique. It's the only one of its kind right now. Okay. Uh, so it's much more than a water softener, much more than a filter. Right. And um, it requires very little maintenance. It's going to last you, you know, we gave a lifetime warranty, but it'll last you about 10, 15 years before you need any kind of major service. Really? Yeah. Now, is this whole house or under the sink or how does it work? So we can do a whole house and we can do, a, a, to answer your question, both. Both. Oh, okay. Uh, so we pair it with a purifier, which is reverse osmosis. Um, and that gives you the ideal drinking water for cooking and drinking and ice cubes and coffees, teas, and juices. Okay, because yeah, I, I, I've been told that if, you're, if your ice cubes are cloudy, you got issues. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ideally, you go to a nice restaurant or something, the ice is clear. Yeah. Right? So it's something people don't think about. So you actually have systems that can that actually help the whole. I mean, the all the house. The I mean, showers, bathrooms, whole nine yards. Yeah, so it'll plumb at the main water line, usually in the garage. Okay. And that way we get all the faucets, everything that's going into the house. Kind of helps uh, you on that hard water stuff. Yep. Yep. So now is it now is it a, is it a softener or is it a filtration system? Both. Oh, it does both. both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So typical softeners, uh, it's basically old technology. It was invented a hundred years yeah. ago. Yeah but to handle the water 100 years ago. Yes. And you know, growing up, we used to be able to drink out of the water hose. There's no such thing as filters or bottled water in our homes. Right. So the, what happened is the quality of the water went down, but the technology stayed the same. So average softeners that you can get at your, you know, your depot stores uh, or plumbing companies, it's ba it'll basically last you about a year before you need to re replace the insides of it because the chlorine and the ammonia just destroy it. Wow. Yeah. So, so unlike, unlike the one that I've got at the house now, every three months I'm changing all three filters. It's ridiculous expensive. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's $190. I think a little bit more than that, actually. Like on a fridge filter or something? No, a three-filter three osmosis oh, system. And it's just my sink. Yeah. That's it. Well, in the yeah. refrigerator. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. So for once a year. Yeah. Uh, the filters will need to be changed about every year and a half to two years if you have the 10 <sighs> stage in front of it. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Otherwise, you are talking about about every six months or so. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I don't, and no salt. Uh, we do have salt free. Oh. It just doesn't work for Florida's water. Oh, really? So wait. What about well water? Can you guys handle well water? Because yeah. that's normally when I'm there, I go, oh, I have a well. Never mind. Wells are wells are independent. It depends on the well. So we have wells that are really bad and wells that are really good out here. So yeah. it, it's, we'll go out and do a full water analysis, and then we mm -hmm. have multiple solutions for You just answered my question. For wells. Yeah. That's all. So it's, okay. it's basically what's in your well. Okay. That's, Is it? Do you find the deeper question. the well, the better the water? or? It's hit or miss. Out hit there. or miss. I've, out I've, it, had, yeah. I've had a well in one person's house where it came out like spring water, ready to ready to drink, and then you know in across Florida? the street. Yeah, across the street, it's got sulfur and iron wow. and bacteria, and it's just horrible. So it's it really is a uh, you know per 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 well basis. So what is okay? So walk me through an installation. Just say I, I know there's everything is different. And I understand that, but you know you've got your you got your your filter and you got the three you got your three stage. Is that, a, is that a two day thing, one day thing? Hours. Oh. Normally. That's even better. <laughs> That's, see, you know, yeah. not, I always said, if you know, you get something like Purity Bay, come in there, you, know, you, you, can, you don't need bottles anymore. Right. Because right. the water's just, I like to find that guy goes, some sucker Americans are going to start buying bottled water soon and it's coming <laughs> out of their taps. You know, you, know yeah. you save all that money. It adds up. That um, is crazy. Yeah, not only on bottled water, but on soaps, moisturizers, lotions, conditioners. A lot of people are spending that kind of money right now just because the water is so hard and so rough and all the contaminants. It makes you use more? Yeah. yeah. So just think about our parents and grandparents used to use pure soaps like yeah. ivory snow. Yeah, ivory was the, that was yeah. growing up. That's what we had. Yeah. Yep. So now it's like new and improve this, new and improve that. All Procter and Gamble are doing right now is, you know, coming up with chemicals to fight chemicals in the water because that's the only thing that's changed. I'll be. Yeah. So it's. 
if the water is cleaner, it's less usage of. I bet that's the same thing with your detergent and laundry. Yeah. yeah. So, oh so, wow. Uh, good housekeeping guarantees seventy five percent on savings, uh, but you can actually go back to the dollar store. You can go to your you know uh, just natural brands. A lot of people try to go natural, but it doesn't work with the tap water. Oh no. So no it's no and then tight and gain. Right know? exactly, yeah. and then sometimes you get all slimy, and you're like, oh, why can't I get this crap off? <laughs> it's because your water's not good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. So where now? What area do you guys cover? I mean, I, everybody loves to say all of Florida, but um, I mean, mainly the, the Tri County area. Okay. So that's that's like our you know majority, but we go down as far as Naples, we go up as far as Crystal River, we go we have systems in Orlando. Okay. So not the entirety of Florida, but South Central. South Central. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, what's the? I, mean, I hate to say this, but I mean, because everything is. But what, is there a general like this is a general cost of what it's going to what it's going to be to do the house? Um, well, it all depends on what the customer wants to handle. Right. Because we'll custom build the system for uh, them. Okay. Uh, so it is yeah. pure, it, seriously. It is. I mean, everybody says, "Oh, we got a custom system," yeah. then they go get pack A. You yeah. know, that's not the way it works. It's truly, yeah. it's truly a customized system to the house. Yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so we have, you know, we can build you a simple softener right. of what's out there as long as we explain the consequences that it's not going to last. Uh, we can do exactly what everybody else is doing. Okay. Uh, but, you know, carbon, which is filtration, right. tends to grow bacteria in a couple of years. So then there's more problems like stomach aches and all that kind of stuff. Got it. Uh, so our 10 stage prevents all that. So it, it really needs to be explained in person with visuals so, and, and things. So there truly is no... Is a general cost. It's really an honest to God. It's truly custom to the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What we can wow. say is what you're going to save on a monthly basis. For example, on an average family of four, mm -hmm. it's going to be at least $150 that you can save. So you figure in the next wow. 10 years, that's $18,000. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's so, a boat. So it's less than. Yeah, it's a down payment of a boat. <laughs> so it's less than $18,000. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I don't think there's anything no, less than eighteen thousand dollars. It's a it's a fraction of the cost for sure. That is amazing. Yeah. And no, I know. It's like I just so are you guys? Because I know for a while there you'd call people and go, yeah, we're like a year out. Um, I mean, are you guys free to go? Yeah, we're next day. We we have next five crews. Day. We we like to go A to B. We want to get the customer experience in the good water as soon as possible. Now, uh, so if I want to get a hold of, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys? Uh, call the office. Which that number's been up the whole time, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. We also have the 800 number. It's 888-89-FRESH, 888-94-FRESH. Um, but the local number's on the scene. It's 813-709-7873. Okay, and the website's got a lot of explanation and a lot of pretty pictures. I'm a pretty picture guy. That's what I want, right? Because it looks really cool. Yeah. You can that also is... make an appointment on the website as well. If you don't oh, really? Know. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you guys, now, will they be seeing you or they get to see you? Um, I try to go as many as possible, but we have we have several reps. That's out there awesome. That can give you the same information. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Our, our intention is to give you the, the the data, the information. Right. We like educated buyers. There's no games. There's no dog and pony shows. Uh, like the, a lot of the other companies, they, it's a two hour presentation. Yeah, yeah. We, we can be in and out in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's good and it's simple, and you're like, oh, that makes. I love it when it's explained and go, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and it's quick. I'll go, let me give me some money. You know. Yeah. Uh, now, do you deposit up front, or you pay a full? I pay at the end of the install. You don't pay a dime until you're happy and satisfied. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Because most people are like 50 percent up front, and then they don't show up. Yeah. And you guys show up, right? Yeah. You show up. That is yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Guys, thanks for being yeah. on. Thank you for having um, us. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when we get done with this, I get to walk them down to our cafe and they get to look at stuff. Stick around. We've got more great guests coming. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to RGA Hour. The RGA Hour. I'm excited. You excited? So. Well, let me tell you, this young lady next to me, I know you're doing a lot. I get it. You're doing a lot. But you are with, um, you, you are a hard money lender. Yes. Lindsay White. That's oh, what they tell me. Well, uh, yeah. Hey, is that a hard, is that actually, is that a hard industry right now? It's only hard if you make it hard. Oh, there you go. <laughs> See? It's, yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, so let's talk about Lindsay White. 
What about what's her? Going what do you want to know? Well, what do you I, want, know? I want to know what's going on. That's all. I well, I'm mourning our, our bucks, so there's that. We can't seem to get it together. So you're telling me the goat's not the goat? I, I think he's not a goat. What's smaller than a goat animal? Lamb? I have no idea. To the slaughter? Sure, yeah. Yeah, that. there you go. There you go. Nah, nah, nah. So tell me a little bit about yourself, though. Um, so born in Florida. I love to ski so you're and go actually, out west. So yeah. you're actually a Florida girl. Third generation. Dang. We exist. There's like six or seven of us. I didn't think that was a We have thing. a club. You have a club. We have a sticker. We get a special license. Special no, license. <laughs> you, you know, that should be a thing. You can see my car anywhere. It's a Florida State license, and it has my initials. Like, you can't miss me. Can't miss no. you. No. Uh, okay. Now that I've just told everyone what my license plate is. Where did you go to college at? Florida State. Oh, mm -hmm. You're uh, In my family, you were born in a Florida State onesie. That's kind of oh how you come Lord. out, and, and if you don't make that choice, you're uh, shunned. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so what, is it, what is it you actually do? Investment real estate lending. So Oof. people can go to a traditional bank to get a loan for a more, right. uh, in a mortgage on a house, which is what I did for the first 13 years. But in investments, you sometimes need to pull the trigger quick. You need to be able to close or do a cash deal right, now. right then, right now. Right. Generally speaking, traditional lending, you are handcuffed and you're tied. You're going to have to 60 days. You have appraisals. You have title <laughs> problems. Right. You have, you have so, documentation. Like, can I have your blood type and your tax return from 1912? Like, what's the name of what? your firstborn? Right, right. That's not us. So we, okay. we provide a way to almost make a same as cash offer, even though, yes, we, there is a loan behind it. But right. nobody needs to know that. No, no, no. Uh, so the coolest thing about us is we don't have appraisals. We can close in two days. Uh, we don't have FICO minimums, so it's okay if there's something with your credit in the past. Just tell the story, and if it makes sense, it makes sense. And you're, you work for Easy... Easy Street, yes. We Capital. are headquartered out of Texas, okay. and we lend in 40 states and Hawaii, which I really what? want to do a deal in Hawaii because oh. then I want to do we the closing just, in Hawaii you and just not come back. fly over, yes. do the whole thing <laughs> over there, and then a couple days on the beach. No Alaska, but Hawaii is fine. Alaska is awesome. I don't think people are really flipping properties in Alaska, but maybe. <laughs> They're flipping to get out. Right. Because it's cold. Everything's on sale up there. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, I know a little bit about the financial world when it comes to that side of it. And I've always said, you know, especially investors, uh -huh. investors big time need to have that. Hard, hard guy in their in their back pocket. They need to have a team in place. Yeah. So if you don't have contractors that you trust and not someone you just Googled, someone that you've worked with or a neighbor's worked with, if you don't have your lender on your team, a title company who knows you, like all these things that need to go quick, right. that's what you have to build before you start getting into investing. And so with hard money, we, we want to be your lender for life and we want to do multiple deals. Okay. And so, with us, like if you get started, it's okay to be a newbie. And a lot of companies require experience. We don't. Now, that being said. You don't want said, someone just flipping burgers yesterday coming and go, hey, I want to I want to invest today. Maybe if they have a great credit score and a lot uh, of money in the bank. Oh, okay. And it's a, a decent deal. Right. And it's maybe a small renovation. So oh, fixing yeah, yeah, and flipping, yeah. like, right. for example, if you have a $200,000 house mm -hmm. and you want to do 100000 reno, that's, you know, half of the renovation, uh, half of the budget is renovation. I, right. That's probably not something we would not recommend for your first right, one. Right, right. But let's say you find a great deal off market. Right. It just needs some cosmetic. That would be a really good first deal. Okay. Well, so I could be flipping burgers. And sure. Go, you know what? I got money in the bank. Just because um, someone flips burgers doesn't mean they're not I know, smart or I, doesn't. I, I use that term because there's a lot of people that get into the industry uh, like they want to become a realtor. They were flipping burgers yesterday. Now they went and took the test and they're a realtor. No. <laughs> That's not the way it works. Correct. Also, and, Tampa Bay's highest realtor per capita in the country. Did right? you know that? And this is not like you've been doing this for like a couple of months. You, you've been years. in this. Thirteen. Yeah, you've been in this world. But I only, I'm, I'm, you know, I. That's impossible because I only look like 22. I was gonna right? say, turn 21. She's been, she's been doing money lending since two. <laughs> Just saying. Um, so yeah, I mean, what, what got you into the industry to begin with? Because it is, you know, I mean, I don't know anybody that wakes up in the morning and goes, ah, I'm going to be a Nobody be wakes a up and goes, I'm going to be a banker. I That's can't what I wait. Do. No, not, not a thing. Um, I was in business school in college. Okay. And I did not want to be a CPA. Love you, Dad. And my sister, <laughs> it's just not Thanks, something Dad. I wanted to do. Um, but I did, I, all I knew at the time was I want to run a cheerleading gym. True story. Like that, an all-star cheerleading gym. Well, cool, but that doesn't really pay all the bills coming out of college nor can you do that coming out. Right. Um, so I did a lot of first interviews with companies all over the gamut. And okay. I think 
that's where I started learning about different industries. Ah. Still at this point, I wasn't super excited about banking. Right, right. But I interviewed pretty well and I connected and I wound up at BB&T and, and actually at the time it was the number two banking program in the country. Yes. Somehow I got that job. Good for still you. Still nope, still wondering. I'm not sure. Someone Your liked me somewhere. Who knows? Sparkling personality. <laughs> Who knows? So that's how I started off in banking. Okay. And then it just kind of went from there. It developed a little more into real estate. Um, then I moved back. That was in North Carolina. Moved back home to Florida and was a small business lender and then residential. I, I know someone in your industry and that okay. person tells me that she go, that she goes, I have I've 41 years she's been in the world, right? And she goes, out of all the people that I've interviewed and talked to them about how much money they make, I love mine the best. It's about the same. I, I do. I, I geek out on my job. Right. I enjoy it. But you can see it on my face. Like, I haven't stopped smiling this whole time that we've been talking about this. Um, I enjoy real estate. It's fun. And I, I love helping people get to their goal. So as a residential lender for seven years, I was helping people buy their first house or maybe refinance and pay off a bunch of debt, which is always fun. Now, I'm helping you set up for retirement because... No offense, everyone that believes a 401k <laughs> in the stock market is going to let you retire early. Right. I don't think that's true. Buy gold. So, anyway. oh, you're that government. You're that person. <laughs> no, I'm not. Buy I'm gold, not. silver. What's that commercial? Oh, I never mind. Bear it in the backyard, please. <laughs> um, so, real estate and, yeah. and cash flow is a great way to yeah, supplement. Absolutely. It's never good to be pigeonholed into into no. one thing. You need to be diversified. Correct. And. Investment real estate is a great way to do it. And at any age, even if you wanted to invest in your older and you're thinking, I can't flip a house. I don't want to hire a contract. You don't have to. Find one right. that's off market, ready to rent. Right. And hire a company and, yep. and collect. Exactly. Especially short term rentals. Now, Airbnbs I, are super hot down here. Never mind. So, out of all of that, you're writing a book. I am writing a book. Yes. Now you're going to be an author. I am. Well, you already... I also never woke up and said I want to be an author. <laughs> Basically, everything I'm doing in life, I never thought I would do. So. There's something wrong with that. So what's the book going to be about? wasn't can part of the plan. Can you talk about the book yet? My contract says I can say five uh, words. Five words. I Here am go. writing a book. <laughs> I'm writing a book. <laughs> um, here, here's why. We're not... We have the outline done. Okay. And we're like 99% sure on the title. Okay. I'm using a... New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and USA Today best-selling author. She's wow. published over 80 books. I'm doing it the right way okay. because it's my heart, my soul going into a product that I want to make sure is done correctly. Is she ghostwriting for you? Collaborative ghostwriting. Co co okay, I, I'm love, gonna, I love that. That's so awesome. So her involvement over the course of a year is going to be about 240 hours. Okay. And mine is about 10 to 12 hours per month. Right. So it's about half. Yeah. But you've got to give her the meat and then... Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, it's a process. It's fun. Um, I'm super excited about so, it. It's not a Lindsay biography. Do That's we have boring. A, do we have a date of it might potentially come out? We do. February 4th of 24. Ooh. 2424. You got work to do. Yes, and I, do. I know this for a fact. Yes, I do. Yes, that's a lot good yes, for I you. I'm very, I'm very excited. So glad I met you. It's squashing, it's squashing my biggest fear in life. And so I always say, cool, accept the fear and figure out a way to overcome it. Oh, that's awesome. Lindsay, thank you for being on. Thank you. Appreciate it, hon. Hey, stick around. You know what? We got more guests coming up. And you know, Matt did a great job. He's got a great lineup. See you guys in a little bit. Welcome back. And you know what? We all need credit card processing. True. If you're in business, you do. True. Right? Even people that you would think that didn't need it, need it. Like a the, mortgage company. There are a ton of industries that need it. a mortgage need, company need yeah, it. For sure. They need it. So I got Leonard Godell, right? And you're from Panda Pay. Let's talk about what, let's talk about Panda Pay. Talk about it. Tell me. Sure. So it, what, we're an electronic transaction management company. Okay. So what that means is we help businesses that need to get paid. Right. You want to get paid faster. You're tired of chasing down checks, tired of uh, waiting for that Venmo cash app to arrive. Um, you want to get paid faster. Maybe you want to pay a lower rate. That's what we do. Ooh, lower rate. So can you say numbers right now or are they kind of in the, per, what percentage? So it's a loaded question. I know. That's okay. why That's why I'm like, so going, can I ask that question? When you're a business owner and you have a brick and mortar business, somebody walks into your business right. with their credit card, depending on the points, rewards, spend limits associated with right. that card, there are different fees that you can pay. It's okay. a cost. And it's called the interchange. All oh, businesses, uh, all processors share that same cost. The okay. difference is what's charged above that cost. Right. You could be in a specific industry and take certain types of cards and you could average cards that are you know, 1.5%. 
or you can be in another industry, maybe a high-end business um, in a high-end part of town that takes only foreign cards and they could average 2.7%. The difference is um, not necessarily what processor you're using, but what is that processor charging above that cost? Uh, so um, you could be in a range of two to two and a half percent. That's okay. probably a decent range to be in. But again, it kind of depends on what kind of industry you're in, what kind of cards you're taking. Um, it, it's, it's a loaded question. I did not, I, so, okay, so, I mean, I didn't realize that if I'm in a different industry, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna pay more. Yeah, so wow. some industries have access to lower costs. Right. If you are a charity, if you are a grocery store, if you're a government service, you're gonna have a lower cost than let's say a traditional retail business or a professional like a doctor, um, you know, vet, dermatologist, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, if you're dealing in high-end jewelry, you are considered a high-risk business. You might be have access to higher costs. Is that because of the potential chargebacks? Yes. Yes, ah, chargebacks are a big thing okay. in this industry. So right. you know a little bit about chargebacks. Oh, um, yeah, I know a couple things. <laughs> so, I'm in the video production world. Yeah, so I mean, ultimately, a chargeback, any transaction, whether it's done over the phone or you put your chip in that machine, any uh, transaction can be disputed. And 99% of the time, the cardholder wins that chargeback. Yep. Unless a business owner takes a lot of steps to protect himself, you know, phone number, picture of the front and back of the Contract. card, signature, written authorization with a signature. Um, I have, I, I do have clients who have won chargebacks before. I have, it I've won several, but because I had contracts in place. Well, so the biggest thing is, are you taking the steps to protect yourself? I did have a business in Toronto when I, where I, when I started out that was getting chargebacks regularly. Um, they were in a high-end part of town, and their business was these high-end skin exfoliation devices oh, and creams yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So they would literally have, like, beautiful girls and boys standing out on the street, dragging people in, hey, come see, come see what we got, and it's impulse purchases. I said to them, you've got to take more information about these clients if you want to protect these purchases. Right. They're like, it's gonna, we're going to lose the sale. We're willing to risk, you know, 1% of their burn, volume. Burn, burn, yeah. We're willing to risk 1% of our volume because at the time they were making $300,000 a month. So losing, you know, $2,000 every month on these chargebacks a wasn't deal. a big deal to right. them because they were making so much. Now, COVID killed that business. Yeah. And now they do other stuff. But, um, yeah, it's really, uh, it's, it's a big piece. There's, there's a ton of fraud in this industry. So businesses need to protect themselves. Do you, now, do you supply the hardware, software? Can I do this on my website? Can I, you know, do I have, is, is, I mean, do you have that web interface, all that kind of fun stuff? So the answer to all of those questions is yes. So um, for the most part, my bread and butter is a physical terminal. You can see sort of at the bottom of the yeah, screen yeah. here, it says physical terminal. So you want something that's wired into your desktop. You want something that you can walk around your office with. You okay. want something that you can take in your truck for service calls. We have everything. Okay. You want something with apps on it, a smart terminal so you can do bookkeeping or you can do restaurant POS. We have smart terminals that you can do that with. Okay. Do you want something more remote? If you are, let's say, taking calls over the phone and taking credit cards over the phone, we have virtual terminals, so you can do that remotely. You can send an email to your customers, and they can enter their they can enter their credit card information, returns the payment to you, um, and we can hook up to your website. So, so if we, I want to do an online store and do my processing through Panda Pay, that's that's a possibility. Absolutely. So that's a big deal because most people have to go to Shopify or crap like that. Oh, and don't go to Shopify. They're losing so much money. Just do it on your website. Friends don't lend friends. Use Shopify. <laughs> I know, right? So All Shopify, right. Uh, it's a good service. It, it makes everything mm. easy for you, but it, it costs you money. A and lot of money. it's probably a little bit cheaper to get a web developer to design a site and put, let's say, WooCommerce on there. Right. We have a free plugin, and it's connected directly to your bank account. Yep. And you're paying tons less than you would with Shopify. Wow. So so where do pe if I wanted to get a hold of you to go, hey, I want to sign up for you with you, where do I go? So, I mean, 813-729-5666. That's my office number here. It comes directly to my cell phone. I use Ring Central. Can I plug Ring Central? Those I guys know. are great. Yeah. Um, Ring Central helped me keep my Canadian phone number. My Canadian clients can still call me on my same Ring Central app, reach me. My tagline, whenever, I, if you've met me at a networking meeting, I always say, I always answer my phone. So whether yes, it's me do. or my uh, internal office manager, somebody is going to answer the phone and help you. If you want to sign up, if you have a question about your existing account, whatever it is, somebody's going to answer the phone. Somebody's going to help you. You go back to worrying about your business. Let me deal with the rest. Wow. That's good. I do like Ring Central. They're good guys. Actually, my son used to work for a company that was sold Ring Central. Okay. He knows it. We don't have it here, but we're too little. 
believe okay. it. Okay. We're tiny. There's only two of us. Believe it or not, only okay. two of us. Well, so uh, how else? So what else can what else can you tell the people at home uh, uh, about the credit card credit, credit card processing systems that you haven't already told them? Okay, so it can be a it can be scary. The company that I work for uh, was started in 2014 in Montreal, which okay. is where I'm from. Coincidentally, I was living in Toronto when I came to them. Welcome to the states. Thank you. It's been it's been one year, one year as of last good week. For you. And um, and, and I, you're not I, melted yet, so that's all good. A little bit. I'm getting, <laughs> yeah, I'll, a little bit. I'll get I'll get into that. Um, so ultimately, these guys who started our company, they work for all the big players in Canada. There's okay. some companies called Moneris and Chase, which is here in the U.S. and First Data, which is also here in the U.S. Um, and they saw a lot of horrible practices. Businesses getting locked into long-term contracts or they would be signed to some kind of introductory rate mm -hmm. and then have their rates jacked up over time. Yep. Or somebody would come install their machine and then they try to get in touch with them and they would disappear. Right. Never That's get in touch with them. usually what again. happens, right. So we started Panda Pay. Why Panda Pay? Black, black and white. Everything's in black and white. There's no gray areas with us. Okay? We keep things simple, honest, and straightforward. Okay. And so... Um, I came to Panda Pay about year two. I was I worked in the financial industry for 20 years. Uh, I worked for mutual funds, pensions, all that kind of stuff. I was looking for something different. I like to say I was bored from cubicle to cubicle. <laughs> um, my wife and I were on a flight to Costa Rica. We met a couple. We chatted for four and a half hours, and he gave me his card. He said, you should do this. And so all week in Costa Rica, between volcanoes and hot springs in the ocean, I'm looking at this car going, hmm, I've never done this before. Right. What should I do? But he said to me something that stuck with me. He goes, people are going to like you. Um, and when I met the CEO of Panda Pay, the CEO told my mentor, the guy that I met, he said, drop this guy. He's never going to make a sale. Don't worry about him. But six years later, I'm part owner of the company. <laughs> I, wow. um, I'm helping them grow the brand here in the U.S. Right. And I'm never going back to a cubicle again. That a boy. Yeah. And so what I'm doing is I'm helping business owners. I started my business by literally walking door to door, walking into a business, introducing myself. Is there a way that I can help you? Let's find out what your issues are. What are your pain points? How can I help? Got it. And most often it's saving money. Sometimes it's, I need a better service experience. Sometimes it's, I just need somebody that I can talk to when I have a question. That's a big um, deal right and there. And for That's that. That's number one. And for, for that, I've helped a lot of merchants. Okay. Right. So I built a big book of business in Canada. Um, I helped them grow the brand. I was the first rep in Toronto. Now I'm the first rep on the ground in the U.S., helping them build it here. We have very little infrastructure here. I'm basically, you know, paving the way. You're paving the way. Um, there's far more competition here. Oh, there's, more than you I know. would say probably 100 times more competitors than in the U.S., I mean, than in Canada. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. There's so many competitors here. You could walk down the street to 50 different businesses and, and see 50 different, different, um, it, it is. different processors. In Canada, there's maybe 10 players, and seven of those are resellers of, of the others. So there's really um, so much more to do here, but it makes it a little bit easier. Right. People say, I haven't heard of Panda Pay. Well, have you heard of every other processor that's <laughs> out there? No, right. you haven't. In yeah. Canada, there's, there's so few, they haven't heard of Panda Pay. Well, why not? We're like one of the only players out there. You got to know us by now. Yeah. Um, but we're growing really well. If you look up Panda Pay online, we got over 300 reviews. We're 4.6 on Google. People love us. We're doing right by merchants. We're helping them. We're the largest independent in Canada, and we're just getting bigger by the day. Dude, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. I was going to ask an RGA, RGA question, but we're out of time. So stick around. we got more people coming on. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, welcome back everybody. You know what? We're going to talk food. One of my favorite things to talk about. I love food. So we got chef, uh, the chef Sha Shakespeare, Shakespeare is the name of the company. This is Valda Shakespeare. Yes, sir. Right. So yes, sir. let's talk about, let's talk about chef Shakespeare. Okay. Chef Shakespeare is from Jamaica. So I was born in a large family. And back when I was born, we had no electricity. So my mom had to cook every single day. Wow. So that's where I got my love of right. cooking 
from my mother. That is amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So it was like, was it gas or, or, or fire? Fire, wood. Oh, wood wow. fire every, every day. day. No gas, no gas. Wood fire every you bought, day. The, I guess the men in your family, I'm not saying you guys didn't, but the men in your family must have been strong chopping their wood all day. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> Whew, yeah. I don't know about. Yeah. I like cooking, but I don't know if I like it that much. I've gotten spoiled with electricity and gas. So I'm just saying. Now, I do some smoking, but you know. So, so, um, so how did how did Chef Shakespeare come about? Well, as I said, you know, I always loved to cook, and I came to America, and I went to culinary school here in Tampa Bay. And I got my BA in culinary management. Okay. And so I've been in the kitchen all my life. Okay. I love to cook. Food brings friends together, family together. So I decided that, well, after working in the industry with many leading uh, companies, I decided to do my own. Nice. And so Chef Shakespeare. That's all. So did you start off? Food truck, or, or did you start off? Your, are, are you going to have a uh, uh, a restaurant? Food truck. Start food off truck. in front. Food yeah. truck. Food truck. Yes. That's a lot of work, isn't it? It is. But my concept with this is, as you know, if you have a building, a restaurant, mm -hmm. and it's not happening there, you just can't move. That's correct. But if I, if with a truck, if I'm in this area and something not going right, I can always go to the other area. So that's why I go food truck first. Did you find Did you find um, getting your followers easy? Well, it's all a matter of social media. I um, like when you said that. Thank you. <laughs> it's all about our social media. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's not hard. And my tagline for my company is, food so great, you will lick your plate. Okay. I'm in. Yes. <laughs> so let me guess. It's not Italian. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's it's talk Jamaican. about what kind of food it's you Jamaican. have. It's Jamaican. We're going to be doing our jerks. Oxtails and curries, juice, mm. but I also have a vegan. Vegan? Yes, we do. Yes, so, we do. do you have two air? You're going to have two areas to cook. I've always wondered that in a, in a restaurant that does they offer both. Do you have to have a separate area for? Not a separate area, oh, okay. but I would use different pots to do okay. different things. Yes. So we have a vegan. We have vegan items on our menu. Can you do me a favor, explain mm -hmm. the difference between jerk seasonings and curry seasonings? Well, jerk seasoning, I make my own jerk seasoning. Oh. Yes, I do. I use all my ginger, my spices, my onions, my skeleton, you name all of them. And I use a wine, and that's how I make my, mm. my jerk seasoning. Oh. And you have to have the pepper scotch bonnet pepper i was gonna say there is a certain pepper yes, that you have yes. to use scotch with the jerk bonnet yes. pepper. okay that's the flavor of mm. the jerk seasoning the hotter the better for Hot. me <laughs> the hotter i want to sweat what? when i'm eating oh my god yeah i'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not right well so so what makes that different from curry i mean or is it is curry, a curry is, is a different thing that's a, a yellow okay the, the flavor okay the, 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 the color so you do your Curry chicken, curry goat, mm -hmm. all of those stuff. So it's two two different stuff. Are you gonna do goat? Of course, uh, we have to do goat. Oxtail. I love. See, me and Rob were talking earlier when you got here. We we're like, he goes, he goes. I don't know about oxtails. Mm -hmm. He goes, they're kind of they're kind of an interesting taste. I said, I grew up on them. So to me, they're just that's just good. They're very very right. Very good. Exactly. Very good. So what and other types they, of food are you gonna have? Well, we're gonna have, um, as I said. Oxtail, goat, of course, fish, escovis fish. Mm. Have to have that fish. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or roast fish. And I can do a uh, whole fish or a fillet, you know, whatever you, you prefer. So, yes, yeah, we'll be having some fish too. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, you know, the beef, the chicken, it's this, but the getting into the goat, the, the oxtail and the goat, that's a different world that a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it but, but I find that a lot of people travel to Jamaica yes. and they love the cuisine. Yes, they do. They love the food. Right. And I think being here, you know, people go there all the time, they come back and they're looking for that same thing. So I would be able to provide that for them. Now, did I hear you getting ready to have a grand opening? Oh, yes. Oh. Well, my food truck will be starting on December 
first. Okay. And then on the 9th of December, we'll have our grand, grand opening. That's awesome. Yes, I'm excited. And do we have a location yet? It's going to be at 9743 West Hillsborough Avenue. Okay. And that's in zip code 33615. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. So it's going to be a full menu? Full menu. Full oh menu. My full gosh. menu. I also offer a special thing where it's going to be to eat or not to eat. And so you, you can choose uh, two or three different entrees. Just a sample. A sample, right. right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do that for people who want to try what about just different? guys like me who just like it all and say can i just have a plate full of everything please <laughs> I, I, I can do that for you i'll too. bring my own separating plate and okay. just go here you go okay. just load it all yeah. up <laughs> yes right. yeah we can do that you sharing john nope <laughs> right. no so so okay so where's the big plan going where are you going with all this ultimately ultimately i would love to have different food trucks all over. Oh. So I would love to do a franchise. Oh, yeah. That's my dream. Because I'm telling you, the food is good. The food is good. Very, yeah. very, very good. That's and I think we need that out there. Because sometimes you go someplace and you're like, what did I pay for? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So now when you get your food license uh, in your truck, mm -hmm. can is can do you have to stay in Hillsboro or can you kind of go around no, different no, counties? No, no, no. I got my food license in Pasco, and I made sure I asked oh, the question. Yeah. I said, my food license is in Pasco. Where they're like, anywhere in Florida. I'm like, okay, okay. So that means if I want to host you out in my front parking lot of the mall, you could you could come out to the mall, yes, set sir. up. And, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Anywhere in Florida. So we do, every now and then the mall will have food trucks out there. Okay. Yeah. So All right. I'll, I'll talk, to, I'll talk okay. to Chris. Okay. I'm like, okay. I'm excited now. I'm Sound like, like a plan. Sound like uh, a plan. You, you know, but it's, and it's hard. You, you, it, it's hard to find good Jamaican cooking. And I, and I, I mean, we, I tried. My wife and I are, we, you know, we've, tri we've been to Jamaica several times and we, I do, you're right, I love the cuisine, I love the fish, but I also like the oxtails. Okay, and, all oh, right, yeah, do you yeah, like yeah. everything? The greens, uh -huh, oh my God. Uh -huh. and it's, the plantains. And, oh my God. Do you do them sweet or do you do them savory? Sweet, ah. sweet, sweet, sweet. So tell everybody where you can get you on social media. Um, my Facebook page is Chef Shakespeare. I also have Instagram. I have a YouTube channel, Chef Shakespeare, all Chef Shakespeare. We got to get you on TikTok. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me talk yes. to you about TikTok. Okay. The government's hating on it right now, but it doesn't matter. We all got it. And it ain't going to go away. Man. That's a big thing for you guys, especially if you can watch and stuff going live and cook. Oh, yes, my God. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That would be nice. Yes. Thank you for coming on. Oh, thank I you for having so me. I so appreciate thank you, thank it. You, thank you. Thank and you, you know what, you. folks? Look her up. Go. I, I'm excited. I think we should talk Me to Mark too. about having an, uh, a, a live stream from that time when you open up. Oh, yes. Yeah, that would yeah, be yeah. perfect. Um, that would we'll, be perfect. We'll, we'll do Matt because Matt will make sure it gets done. Mark loves everything and he overextends it. That would be perfect. Every day. Every day. Every Main Street pricing in a fun and effective way. RGA.